When I film stuff on this workbench, I get uh, this stuff in the background and I should really pretty that up and the first thing to do is to get this computer on a nicer table. So I built uh, this table for that, but this table is built almost exactly the same as this table which I made video on. So I didn't film this one to make it quicker and the question is, how long does it take to make a table when I'm not filming and I have a record of that from my time-lapse camera, so let's go over that. You can see a clock on the top left. And I start by grabbing some pieces of two by six and uh, mark those out and cut them to length. And then I cut them at an angle to make the tapered pieces for the legs, which I then pass over the jointer to smooth that cut. Next, I go looking for some pieces of two by four that are about the right length to use for the apron rails. I can't find just the right length, so I use a new piece of two by four and cut that to length. And then I pass those through the planer to get them nice and smooth. Then I roll the uh, pantry rotor into the well-lit part of my shop and put the uh, 45 degree angle jig back on there. Next I spent an embarrassingly long time tweaking the alignment of the uh, 45 degree jig so that the holes would be lined up properly. Every time I adjusted it, I ended up adjusting it in the wrong way it seemed, so it just took forever. And forever turns out to be half an hour, because now looking at the video I know how long it actually took. As I clamped the first long piece, I realized it was kind of crooked, so I ended up uh, passing it over the jointer and through the planer to get that straightened out. Then uh, cutting all the holes in the apron rails, and that went relatively fast. After that, I took the uh, 45 degree jig off the pantry rotor so I could clamp the legs onto the table and drill through them at a right angle. And drilling those legs went uh, relatively quickly, except after I was done drilling the legs, I realized I forgot to drill the holes in two ends of the apron rails. So I had to put the 45 degree jig back on the pantry rotor. This time I lined it up much more quickly and I only had four more holes to drill. After that I used my big dust collector and a long hose to vacuum all the chips off the floor because I don't have any dust collection on the homemade pantry rotor. I don't normally film this sort of thing but it's on the time lapse and I want to show everything this time. Then I used my rotor lift on the table saw to put a round over on all the uh, edges of the legs as well as the bottom edges of the apron rails. I used my calipers to check the depth of the holes that I drilled and then worked out how long the dowels need to be to go through the legs and into both apron rails and I cut the dowels to length on the bandsaw. Then a bit of sanding on some of the legs and a quick dry fit of one of the joints. Then I used a short scrap of 2x4 and marked and cut out some more 45 degree clamping calls on the bandsaw. Getting the glue ready, I had to refill the bottle and I also got a glue container ready because dipping a splint of wood in a container is much handier for gluing this kind of dowel joint. Assembling the glue joints this time went together much better because the joints were more precisely cut and they fit the dowels much better. Using my clamping calls and the big clamp, I just slowly pressed all the joints together and I assembled uh, half of the table with two legs and then the other half with two legs and then it was time to get ready to join those two halves together. And even though I wasn't really filming this project, I set up the camera to film joining the final two pieces together. I need some way to attach to the top to the table, so I used some thin scraps of wood and cut them to the right length and glued them to the short apron rails on either end. Now you can see the uh, bright dish on the floor. That's my infrared heater. The camera I use doesn't have an infrared filter, so it looks really bright. It doesn't really look very bright in person. And I use that to uh, warm up the table a little bit because the temperature in my shop is only about 12 degrees Celsius, which is a bit iffy in terms of gluing. Here I'm cleaning off some of the uh, glue squeeze out. That's best done when the glue is just a little bit hard, but soft enough that it's still easy to peel off with a chisel. And next I had to get the uh, tabletop, which actually the computer that's recording this is on, so I had to move that a little bit to get that tabletop out. Now partly by accident, the uh, table base ended up being a tiny bit wider than the tabletop, so I'm planing a piece of 2x4 lumber to the right thickness to then glue onto the side of the tabletop to bring it up to proper width. And I put the tabletop on my workbench and I used three of my uh, long clamps to glue that on there. And 20 minutes after gluing that on, I come back to scrape off some of the semi-hardened glue. Again, that's the best time to scrape it off. Next day I take the clamps off and I take that tabletop on the jointer and use a hand plane to approximate a round similar to the other edges. And then I put that on the table saw and the table base on the workbench and I start varnishing it. And what I do at the start of varnishing is I always put varnish on all the pieces 
and then I go straight back and put essentially another coat on top of the still wet varnish because the first bit of varnish is already kind of soaked into the wood and that way I'm able to get more varnish on it all at once which saves the coat later. And with an infrared heater on it while it dries, within an hour it's dry enough that I can sand it already. It's not really hard yet, but it's dry enough that I can put the next coat on. And just like I did with the first coat, I go over all the surfaces again a second time to kind of double up that coat. So I get a complete varnish with two sort of double coats. And it's thick enough to give me a uh, glossy surface on the soft wood. I didn't get a chance to work on the table over the weekend, but then on Monday, I flipped it over and screwed the top onto it and dragged it out of the way. And then I'm shooting the intro scene for this video, which took a few tries to get right. And now let's look at what the total time is that I spent on building this table. Now my camera produces an awful lot of images, so I wrote this HTML-based uh, browser that allows me to browse through these relatively quickly, so I can just kind of click through here or go to a directory view. And now this view is the actogram view, and that is useful for figuring out how much time did I spend on this. So each line here is one day, and then each character represents about four minutes in the current settings. And uh, the gray lines are weekends. And for instance, up here, that's over Christmas where I didn't get much of a chance to spend time in the shop. So there's very few images that were saved because there was no motion. Terrible time that was. Um, this week was a pretty good time for shop time. This week, uh, not so much. And this is the week when I was working on the table. And if I mouse over any of these things, that shows me roughly what I had there. So for instance, this little bit of time here, where is it? This here, that was the first day of working on the table, but uh, before that, this part here, if I mouse over that, that shows me fixing a plastic snow shovel for the kids. And then here's working on it, this part here, and then this part, and this part, and this part, and this part. And I manually tabulated how long those things are. And first day was an hour and 45 minutes of shop time. Second day was two hours and together minutes. for a total time of five hours and five minutes to build this table. And now I'm just going to move that computer onto this table. I won't bother shutting it down. Now that's a better height for my shop computer, which is this little Raspberry Pi computer right here which aside from being connected to this camera module for my uh, constant time lapses is also connected to six temperature sensors throughout the house. That's where these wires go. This is the basement temperature sensor and it also turns on various smart plugs with a Python script based on temperature and schedule as well as a dehumidifier and I can also use it to look things up or listen to podcasts. Now I just got to clean up the rest of this corner here.